Hello everyone, welcome to the Redmen TV. It is the final word show. Liverpool drew 2-2 with Shrewsbury in the FA Cup fourth round into a replay of sorts. Uh, we'll discuss that later on in the show. But first, let me introduce my cast of characters. I've got Mr. Steve Hoare sitting in the uh, in the number two hot seat. In the Payjack seat. I'm, Pay Jack I'm very much the, the Nico Williams to Chris's Trent Alexander-Arnold. <laughs> <laughs> That's just because you're younger. Better looking. No, that's a lie. On both counts. Okay. I, no, I am younger than him. You are younger than him. That's what I mean. I, I'm yeah. still in something that was definitive. That is true. I'm, I'm probably not better looking than Chris. Yeah. I don't know. Let the viewers decide. Let the <laughs> um, Please don't. Somebody who <laughs> definitely is better looking than both. Yeah, it's Ben Kelly. Oh, on, 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 on the coach. Great ego boost for the Monday yeah, morning. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, and it's Jack, not a high bar. And, <laughs> and, uh, and, and I reckon Jack Gill probably is as well, to be to be fair. I, I think you're probably right. Yeah. I, think the, I think the attractiveness of the, of the opposition coach over there is probably... He's, if he's the Nico Williams to the Trent Alexander-Arnold, who's 21 years old, what does that make us? Um, the team, <laughs> uh, any one of the players that was put out against Villa, yeah. kind of that we'll never ever remember again. Was there two weeks time. Was there one called Reichs? I, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, you're one of them. Um, right. Yes. Anyway, yeah. The the show is brought to you in association with the RedmenTV.com. Uh, our subscription uh, website where you can get more and great additional content including great in-depth and exclusive interviews with Liverpool managers, players, past, present and future as well and all extra content surrounding everything around Liverpool Football Club perfect time to be a subscriber and it's free for the first month as well that I meant TV.com Stay anyway the game it was poo poo uh, yeah, yeah it was yeah. <laughs> I think that's fair um it started all right. It started like exactly how we thought it, it would do. You know, a young mix of pull sides, uh, you know, guys come back from injury, the young lads playing, dominating the ball. It was like, eight, was it 85% possession at one point? And then we scored a very good goal and everything's going about as well as you think. You know, Shrewsby look like they've got a clear plan, which is try and beat the offside trap and mm -hmm. they weren't doing it. They kept getting flagged off all the time and then they got in that one time and the Adrian makes a save. And it kind of fell from that point onwards it was all a little bit crap um, to be honest I think more of the, a lot of the praise goes to them mm -hmm. uh, Shrewsbury because they didn't you know they didn't just throw the towel in at, at 1-0 or even at 2-0 so, so credit to them uh, we looked very rusty the injured lads coming back I think in hindsight it's wonderful saying this now in hindsight playing all three of them so the two centre-halves and Fabinho was probably a, a miscalculation from Klopp but because all three of them looked rusty and they, and they were rusty down the middle of the pitch. Yeah. And that, that that proved to be an issue. Again, in hindsight, he might have done something different. Quite but yeah. but like that's kind of where we are. It might like, it might sound crazy to say this, but it might have been better to play Kiavea as the six in the Fabinho role and play another midfielder. But Klopp has to give these... He needs them back fit. I wonder whether, the, the, I wonder whether the availability of Alana in the end made yeah. a difference to that, you know... Go, yeah. go on, go the, on. the reason I thought we'd play 4-2-3-1 was because I thought that. I thought that having Matip and Lovren just coming back from injury with Neko Williams and Larucci, who aren't defensive fullbacks, might cause problems because, you know, they're not fresh, they're going to be rusty. It, it was sloppy at times and... It, it was just one of those games where you were hoping that they would grow into the game, but actually, I think for, for Lovren and Matip, it, it got worse as, as And Fabinho, I think, as well. Yeah, yeah. I, I think Fabinho was, was sloppy in the first half, um, but definitely uh, Matip and Lovren got, got worse as the game went on. I, I, I think when Matip went off as well, he was limping when, when he walked around, around the stadium, so it might have caused a bit of a problem for us. It was a real, yeah, if, that, if, if, he, if he's out, that's a shame. And again, that's the problem with it. That's my only issue with the starting eleven because I didn't really have an issue with it when it's when you know you see it come out, you think, okay. My my one, the, the line is the interesting point, Ben, for me, because I he'd have absolutely started this game. He'd the captain of the team, wouldn't he? Yeah, exactly. And I think in, it's weird to talk about a game where you're putting three senior lads in a, you know that defensive triangle in front of the in front of the uh, the goalkeeper. Should be more than better. They're all they've, they've all got the most appearances. You know what I mean? They're all they're all really really good solid professionals. Some of them better than that. And Fabinho, I could be the best number six in the world. But when you're playing forty, if you're playing forty three, you had to play forty three one because Kiravay is not really playing. Yeah. He's not he's not an offensive. He's not a box to box midfielder. Fabinho needs to get the minutes under his belt. But if we'd had Lallana, I'd have I, you're right. I'd have actually been happier with the midfield with Kiravay, Lallana, and Jones mm. than necessarily with Fabinho. But Klopp's used this game the way that he's used it. He's used it to get minutes into the legs and 
He's paid, he's paid it, the it, price it's, for. It's, you, Steve's right. It's it, it's looking back in hindsight, yeah. and you, it's it's so much easier to say these things. I and think, Lana I think wasn't every single so. yeah, a lot, Lana wasn't available. But I think every single one of us wouldn't have minded seeing going into the game. Probably wanted Fabinho to start. I mean, we we had the conversation on Friday. I think when we were doing the build up about you know maybe the pitch was going to have the overriding mm. you know. Be a contributing factor to the fact that you know it, it, whether or not he was going to play. Um, you know the, the, the pitch looks good. The, the, he decided he wanted to play, and whether or not that was down to the fact that Lalana was was unavailable, I, I don't know. But you know, going into the game, I certainly looked at the team and thought, oh, you know, I was actually feeling quite positive about Fabinho <laughs> playing because I want you know we as good as Jordan Henderson's been, you know, you want Fabinho back up and firing again. And I wonder whether you know it's becoming a bit of a we're discovering a bit of a trait with Fabinho where it does take a bit of time for him to get back up to speed. You know, if you think about initially how long it took for him to get into the side into the first place, you know, this is the second sort of stint now where we are seeing a bit of rustiness from him. It's going to take, he's just, if he's just that type of player, then fine. And these are the type of games that, that are probably going to be beneficial to him, you know, when we come into, you know, more crucial period of the season. We've got the Atletico tie coming up. We've got, you know, a, a run where we can really kill off the league. In, in in terms of getting in minutes and getting him ready for those games, yeah. these are the games now where we're going to have to. Just I, I think we're going to find it's the overriding story of this. We we, we, we didn't realise it at the time because because you, you can't. They but that's uh, Klopp's attitude toward the FA Cup is we, we're kind of seeing it a little bit with that. You know, we, he's, he's used it. He's used it. He's used it as a spare game because the Premier League team, the A team, yeah. is all encompassing, and it is a shame really because we're not going to. We can sit here and then, like, I, you know, I don't, I don't like to delve too much into negatives, you know, but there's, there's also, I think it's fair to talk about the, the, the poor performances and what have you. We'll see the benefit of this in Fabinho's performance when he, when he starts against Atletico and he's, he's, yeah, for, he's, he's A grade Fabinho. We'll be able to go, well, it was because he got those minutes under his belt, but it's hard. To detach yourself from the here and now, when you look at it, a really, really, really disappointing. Yeah, he, he didn't play well, and that, that, it's one of those things. It's, again, it's, it's all hindsight because before the game, if you'd have ranked one to eleven, who's going to let you down? <laughs> yeah. Fabinho would have been near the bottom because you'd have just <laughs> nailed him on. Yeah. He's playing shoes, but he's one of the best midfielders in the world. He's been absolutely brilliant all, since pretty much like you mentioned since he got into the side. Give or take, he'll be all right. And he just had a stinker. Yeah. He kept passing it to them. He kept giving it away. It didn't look comfortable. I don't think he likes playing four two three one. He, I think he much prefers. Which is mad because that that was how we got him in the team. In yeah, the first I think place. I think he looks far. He's much more comfortable. Or he needs a more energetic other alongside him. Look at the Wolves game. I thought he was just as bad when he came on. And and again, it, I, I'm allowed. We're all allowed to say Fabinho had a bad game without saying that he, you know we're not saying he's crap. He's he's, no, <laughs> yeah, yeah. he he's world class, but he. This is it. He's off. He's off the pace, and he was off the pace against Wolves. But he had Jordan Henderson, who was superhuman yeah. alongside him. Whereas, and to be fair to Kiravea, K- who had a good game, set up the goal. You know, it's another solid performance from him for us. There's a reason this is a lad who only get comes in for cup games for us, and no one else see, seemingly wants to take a take a punt on yeah. him. Yeah, and again, it's. It, you can only analyse what you've just watched. I thought the two centre halves got bullied. I thought the centre midfielder was was poor. Just, just, and the centre forwards, even you know, in, in Divock Rigo, whatever, left wing, whatever, they are your four senior players, and they Ooh. were the, they were the worst four players. They, they were they were all rubbish. And, and then if you know the, the better and the better players were your young lads. So you, you, Jones looked good at times, and I thought Williams had a good game. The goalie was very very good. So yeah. it's it, it, you kind of it's been a role reversal, and whether it's a you know, I, I was I watched it on TV and Martin Keown was saying Liverpool got complacent and I, maybe they did. I don't I didn't really feel that. Mm-hmm. I just feel like it was just a bit crap. Yeah. And, and it's hard it's hard to justify like it I I am not a big fan of changing the four, two, three, one. I've said this in the past. I, I think if you especially when you make lots of changes to your team, I think your constant should be your formation in yeah. that that's your back that's your go to is that these lads are all used to training four, three, three, even even the young lads that as, as you know, did that's what they're used to as well, Jack. So to then flip it again, it's just another thing for the manager. Having said that, Paul, that team was 2 0 up after 50 minutes against Shrewsbury away. You know, mm. and so as much as you might want to say this, this, and that, the, from that point on, they should never draw. Yeah. Probably. So it's it's one of those in that it's a ve- it's one of the very few times this season where we've got to sit here and say, you know what, one, two, three, four, five years were a bit crap. Yeah. And and we can't, at the end. You know, we, we could have lost that game. It, mm. it, 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 they were coming on strong. They had that corner at the end, yeah. and I thought it was just set up for us to lose. And you know, another great cup upset. So, <laughs> I don't, Klopp might have preferred. I don't know, but mm. in the end, I think we, 
you've got to credit Shrewsbury. They they more than deserve that draw. They deserve the the, the, the replay and the, the money that they're going to get from it. And there's a lot of Liverpool players there who need to go and have a think. You know what? Did I re- what did I do wrong? Because we, we, we shouldn't be the Champions of Europe shouldn't be the pla- shouldn't be drawn. The, 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 the platform for these cup successes though, Jack, has been the senior players. Yeah. Everyone, yeah. all the young lads have drawn all the plaudits. So everyone bang Curtis Jones sticking a world in against Everton, Harvey Elliott having solid games a, a, along the way. You know, some of the standout performers in the in the, the obviously not in the Carabao Cup game because it was nothing but it was nothing but children. Yeah, can club delivering a text message of encouragement at half time. The, the MK Don's game is James Milner is, yeah. is is the is the real solid performer in that game. Curtis Jones wins man, wins man of the match, but James Milner guides him through that game. And we've seen Adam Lallana in the Arsenal game, Joe Gomez in 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 those games. In this one, we turn to the senior lads and these right. They've they've let the young lads down. I'm not going to yeah. sit here and I could because I've seen some people. Say, I thought Casey Jones was really good. Yeah. I said, well, he did this and did this. I'm not asked. He's 18 years old. Any bad things he does are inconsequential to me. I can focus on the good things. But you need you need the senior lads around to to bolster what the young yeah, lads are doing. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I, th- I think we had to go to the 4-2-3-1 yesterday because I think. It was working around playing Fabinho. I think he couldn't drop Chirivella after how well he played against Everton. And as I said, with the full-backs being so attacking, I think we had to play 4-2-3-1. But I think the, the thing is with the transition of us under Jurgen Klopp, what's really improved us and made us into this world-class sp- uh, team is that spine. And and that's why it's, it's important. Like we played Gomez and Lallana in the spine against Everton. It worked really well. You know, the spine should have been perfect yesterday. Matip, Lovren, Fabinho, it should have been more than enough to beat Shrewsbury, but it just didn't work. Mm-hmm. Um, and and for me, it's it's like Gomez, young lad, play, commanded that back four against Everton. Um, Lalana doesn't really play. He's fighting for his place in the side. I wonder if Fabinho just didn't want it. He, he knows it was just playing him for minutes just to just to get him in, in, into the flow of it again. Yeah. Do you yeah. know what I mean? I, I wonder if he has the same sort of... Opinion on the FA Cup as as, as Klopp and do you think didn't want maybe? And I was thinking in again in hindsight is that the high line worked for a while, but then it caused us a few issues. Mm. And I don't know about playing a high line with Matip and Lovren because it's, yeah. it, with Gomez yeah. and or Van Dijk, the pace is there. And yeah. to be fair, you know, the the fullbacks are quick, but they are, they're not as good they're on the cover as our two. They're, they're, they're rarely in line. Yeah. So in, again. I felt even when they were getting flagged offside, for in oh yeah, good line. In the back of your mind, you're thinking they're gonna get one. Lovren and Matip were toiling at times. You know, yeah. they, when they when they were getting turned around, yeah. they were they were fighting for their lives to to, so, to, yeah. to keep in it. Like you're right, maybe. But the problem is for me, uh, Dejan Lovren, Ben. Uh, I think funny Chris mentioned to me. I don't know if he did it on any shows. He said, "Is that the first time we've seen?" the old Dejan Lovren since yeah. Van Dijk was yeah. bought in, basically. And that's what you used to get from Dejan Lovren. You know, he's the captain. And I think sometimes... I, uh, Dejan Lovren's a much better defender for just being told to be a defender. I think when he's tasked with being more than that, mm-hmm. that's when you get Dejan Lovren that everyone hates. And I... Look, he will... I. It's, it's almost certain that he will get an opportunity in the first team between now and the end of the season and he'll probably have a really good game and he'll probably score a really important header or do something good because he's a good defender he's, again he's a good player but uh, uh, equally if he goes on and if he moves on in the summer I'm, 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 provided it's a sign of how far we've come I'm just it? bored of watching Dejan Lovren play for Liverpool yeah. like because for his, he's, hmm. he's fine and you can get 10 out of 10 performances out yeah. of him but and again, I'll caveat it with all the caveats. He's rusty. He's not played. I've got to give him. We've got to give him the same understanding as we're going to give Fabinho and Matip, etc., etc. But it, rustiness. He's been. He's twenty nine years old. He's been playing centre back at the highest level for for long, for a long time now. There's just silly decisions that he makes in that game. Well, I mean, he sells problem. himself completely for the second goal, doesn't yeah. he? Completely. It's you know, it's, it's, it's awful. Both and, yeah, both both of them. And to be honest, I mean, I think you know that you can. You can pretty much substitute Lovren there f- format it for me in in, mm. in majority of what you said in term in the context of this game. I don't think you know Matic gives away a horrendous ball at two 0 that they pretty much nearly go through and score. And it was actually at that point I was thinking, God, we're trying to let them score here. That was just before <laughs> the penalty. Yeah. Um, w- w- well, the penalty was given. Um, so so yeah, but but both of them were no good. And I think I think again it goes back to what you were saying. So I think the decision to play both of them on on the, on the build up show. I had Gomez in my team, and I just think just a bit of familiarity in the back four to change the whole back five, I think 
cost us a little bit. I, I, you know, I know that we've got Southampton at the weekend, and you know, potentially, uh, uh, you know, we've now got a replay coming up, and and we got the we got the winter break for me. For me, I think having Gomez in there instead of probably Matip actually, I think I'd have probably put Lovren in alongside Gomez personally. I, I, I just I just think that that's a better. I, I think that would have suited us better. Personally. Gomez has played lots. I, I yeah. understand, again, it's all hindsight, isn't it? Yeah, it, yeah. It, it, it's, it's all hindsight. You, it's funny, but you mentioned there, but it was all Lovren. It was actually old Matip as well. Yeah. Old mm-hmm. Matip, who we used. To, so many of us go. He's a good player, but my word, you can bully your Matip. Yeah. And then for and then for a long time that stopped. And everyone people put it down to being next to Virgil. And maybe it was. I don't know. But even when in different games, Matip didn't get bullied anymore. He was strong. You know, those one-on-one battles that Matip were winning. Um, when he was in a good vein of form, that was nothing to do with Van Dijk. That's just him winning his battles, and yet it was the, the goal he get he get done, just absolutely thrown away like like nothing by some. You know, like, I'll be honest, I don't know the guy who he was, but obviously he's not he's not he's not as good as the defenders. Matt has been keeping quiet for mm. the, the attackers. Matt has been keeping quiet. So I think both of them, almost it was almost revert to type three seasons ago, Matip, and three seasons ago, Lovren or whatever, and. Given the fact that the guy in front of them is meant to be protecting them, then plays badly. Yeah. You can see why we have you can see why we have issues. It's a typical one of these performances. I said this. I've said this a couple of places. I've seen this game played out so many times. Before, All the way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. you Exeter. do, you need because you, you need your senior players to to be at it. You need perfection. You doesn't. You don't need your best players. You just need the lads, your senior players who are on the pitch to be to be absolutely on it, and then that means that your your kids can your kids can shine. Or whatever. What happens is if they're not, and whether that's in this instance, I think it's it's uh, it's down to fitness and fitness and yeah. form, yeah. not complacency, because I've seen it before where you we've had these games where you're dropping in like. Andre Voronins and you're dropping in you're dropping in lads who know they're not going to be playing for the club next season and they know they're not going to get a game between now and the end of the season so it's like you get a bit of a fuck you attitude of like oh right so this is my game is it Whereas we, which is a bit I don't think we've had in this particularly I just think it's a combination of you know again of, of the senior lads not being quite on it um, the one it's only was on it actually I thought um, as mentioned just a little bit earlier Curtis Jones yeah. uh, you know I'm sure there'll be people because this is the this is the internet and this is how we talk about football who will be keen to point out anything that he did wrong. Not asked. I think the way that he conducted himself, and I think when you when you watch particularly watch the highlights back, Steve, he's his fingerprints are over the the good stuff yeah. that we do. Yeah, he, he was he had a mixed game. I think that's fair to say, but the best moments Liverpool had, most of them, Curtis was involved in, in some way. Mm-hmm. Either. You know, it's a very good goal. You know, he takes the goal well, good run and stuff. Um, Few nice passes. He, he, when Liverpool were ticking and when we were confident on the front foot, he was he was involved. His issue was when it got a little bit scrappy at times. And again, he's an eighteen year old kid, so that that can be. He he was a bit loose with the ball at times. But in the role he's playing in the four two three one, he's actually got a bit of license to do that. He's got license to be to try stuff because in theory, the four behind them should should tidy up any mistakes. So he's got the on the edge of the box. He gave it away a few times, didn't yeah. he? And. But that's where you're going to... If you're going to give the ball away, that's kind of where you do it. Um, again, I don't think he was particularly held again. He had Origi, who I thought was poor. Mm-hmm. Minamino was pretty much anonymous. Like He, he was in and out the game a little yeah, bit as well. Yeah, some neat and tidy moments, didn't yeah. he, Minamino? I mean, the build-up actually for Curtis well. Jones' yep. goal is, is really smart play. But you're right, I, I, you know, the ball's not sticking. There's no <sighs> fluency, I think, yeah, between hard, the, the I think players. it's hard for your number 10. Which Curtis essentially was, wasn't he? In that four-two-three-one, mm-hmm. pretty much. It's hard for him to, to do much when when every like there was no one, nothing going on in front of him. It was, it was difficult for him. Um, but yeah, like if you're looking at like players to praise, it's hard. I think you can find the goalie. Mm-hmm. Then you can find Jones, maybe Nico Williams to an extent. Chivaya as well. Chivaya had a good game actually. Yeah, the first half, I thought. The first half especially, and then other than that, like I thought the left back really struggled. I thought yeah. you know, obviously he gives the penalty. We'll come yeah. to later and stuff. It was just, it was just like one of those where at two 0 when they scored that own goal, I was thinking we probably don't deserve this, but this is kind of what you should. This is what this it's is how we should go. Do. This, yeah, yeah, this is yeah. what we do, and it you know the plucky underdogs. We, they were spirited and matched. But they we're were, always better in second halves of games, yeah. and we were attacking our end, and we, when we scored the second goal, you know, in some regards, it did us no favors because it meant I think and maybe that's where it completely does creep in. You think okay, well that's. That should be enough now. And you know the senior team goes 2-0. <laughs> Do you 
job done. You know, got our defence, we'll sort this out. Yeah. And then we might be able to hit on the counter, etc., etc. Whereas those opportunities never arose. Fucking not and happened in that second half for us at no. all. You've got Diva Carigi having one good shot from distance. Which, you know, you don't want to necessarily encourage because when you're taking pot shots on the edge of the air, it's, a, it's an absence of ideas, not an idea. Um, but it's good, but ultimately, the keeper saves it. He picks it up, he boots it down the other end and they, sc- <laughs> and they score off it. Um, we didn't we didn't kick on at all in that, in that second half. Um, let's, let's do it because you've, you've, you've alluded to it, Steve, but it's not a pen. No. Um, it's outside the box. No. So LaRucci is, he's caught a couple of times, which you, I think, look, He's an attacking fullback. There's times when he's pressing into their midfield. We saw it in the in the derby. He's he's wild. Like it's dead exciting when it's going really well, but he's nowhere near trained enough to be a left back for a Liverpool. I, season, I don't he? think he'll be a left back in the future at all. I think once we have a perfect understudy for for Andrew Robertson, that that sort of like for like like Nico Williams is. I think that'd be the case for our under twenty threes. Either plays as, as a nine in the middle or out left wing. So it, it's one of them. I, I can't see it. The only man that seems to be playing him left back is, is Jurgen Klopp. For me, it's not a penalty, but it's a free kick and a red card. Um, so either way, we we kind of got lucky yeah. because playing with ten men against the League One side, mm-hmm. I think is actually probably worse. Especially the way we were playing, we were very flat. Yeah. Um. So so for me. I, I think it could have gone either way. If it, it's, it's mad, isn't it? it if no VAR keeps him on the pitch. Yeah. Because mm. if, if the ref, if, cause obviously this double jeopardy rule means if you're going for the ball, but if it's outside the box of the free kick, he probably does get a red card, doesn't yeah. he? So it's, yeah, it was it was a strange one. Um, unless unless they want to follow the example set by FIFA referees in Qatar, where he just wants to give a free kick to us on the edge of our box yeah, instead. Yeah, yeah, you know absolutely. I mean? Give a drop, um, give, give a drop ball, didn't he? Or yeah, yeah, give a give a give a drop ball for, <laughs> yeah, for yeah. A nothing. But no, I think. Um, it's the, another way, another way you can kind of caveat the game is that you know even if we do go down to ten men there, they have a free kick. Okay, maybe the, maybe the, maybe the free kick goes in, but the game turns on the penalty, doesn't yeah, it? True. So you know the, 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 the penalty's up, given. Like, suddenly it's two one. They're lads. they lads. We jump on the pitch. Yeah. We have to, have to score mm. in the penalty. We have to yeah. score in the, a goal, and we showed you what it meant. You're right. It, it gave them yeah. everything they yeah. needed. Even if you go down to ten men, what was it, twenty minutes to go at that point? You know, let's assume the free kick doesn't go in. You're still two 0 You can kind of, you know, there, there's other options. Then you've got on the bench. He's got well, you know, on you're the bench. You can bring well, up. You, you, know, you know, know what I mean? There's, there's other ways of cap, but but suddenly it's two one, and then you know, you get the second goal that drops through, and the centre backs sell themselves, and it's two and two. It's the whole game has changed on a bad refereeing decision, and then people moan about VAR. And, and I understand that VAR hasn't been doing it for the Premier League, but then you go and people are going, well, Liverpool are getting all the luck from VAR. No, we're, yeah. <laughs> the, the, we're getting the right decisions. The ref, the ref was very unsure. I, I think it was the linesman that told him it was inside the box. Yeah, the ref had the way, no idea. The way the ref paused... It, it was a delay, wasn't it? it, it yeah. and he knew it was not a, a penalty yeah. unless he's been told by someone it was in the, in the area. So I think the linesman was the man that's gone, that is in the box. Um, but... For, for me, it's it's one of them where I, I think there were warning signs up to, up to that point anyway. I think we rode our luck for, for the majority of the second half in, and parts of the first half in a way defensively. I'm not sure about Larucci. Well, he's, he's, listen, he's again, I'm not taking a kid out here because he is a kid mm. and he plays left wing so, and then we stick him at left back. Um, probably shows that Liverpool somewhere down the line they need to have a thing called yeah. left back, um, whether it's a young lad or a backup or, or signing someone. But... It's funny watching him when you because he's absolutely bonkers. Yeah. Like against against Everton, he comes on and he gets done a few times. But the next one, he's he's taking people on by our corner flag, yeah. and, and he's and, winning and, and the ball at the yeah, other corner yeah. flag from yeah. across. It's 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 bizarre. Like, it's, it's it's just it's it's fascinating to watch him. Yeah. It's like someone's like a Jack Russell out. Yeah. And it's just and at some, it's doing some really funny boss stuff. And then it'll just shit itself. It's kind of what it's like. It's like it's really fun to watch him, but ultimately it kind of leaves you in a bit of a mess at times. And <laughs> should we actually give Deja Lovren a little bit of sympathy as a result of the Larucci? Thing? Well, I don't think if, for the individual error such as the second goal is absolute suicide. You know the worst. You know the worst. We got the second one is he could just fall him once he gets absolutely done. I think a good centre half yeah. there just absolutely pancakes the fella, <laughs> and and probably gets you'll get a yellow for that. You won't get red for that. But he, he, it's that it's that bad a mistake. He misses the ball and then doesn't even foul the fella. It, yeah. It's it's really. I mean, it, that I don't, again the lad they, they were talking about on the on the TV. The lad who comes on and scores the goals and that 
we made him look like like Ollie Gunnar Solskjaer super sub. Yeah. And you know, he's not. He's, he's a lad who doesn't get a game with Shrewsbury. Yeah. And and it, Disney took the goal very very well, but you know that that is their two international centre halves both have started Champions League finals for mm-hmm. Liverpool. And then that happens. You would never. You just. You can't legislate for that. There's no way that the lads who are on the pitch there don't get absolutely fucking bollocked by the manager over mm. all that because the fact that he's you, Salah's not meant to be on the pitch there, and Firmino's not meant to be on the pitch there, and like Chamberlain probably. Yeah, that makes sense. You know that may, may, maybe just to keep him just to keep him ticking over or whatever. But he wants he wants not he wants Bobby and, and Salah no because if, let's be honest, he, he he probably brings Bobby on a bit earlier if if. If you you know because he needed them, we you know we were, we were slightly more dangerous for having him on having him on the pitch. But yeah, Klopp would have because it, that's the point is that for as much as we can sit here and we can make I think we could have done a whole show saying here's the reasons why that's not gone our way and gone into how long it's been. It's been this many weeks since Fabinho's played you know consistent football and, and, and Matip and Lover and all those kind of things. It, they're a mid-table League One outfit. And you know, the, 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 yeah, the pitch wasn't up to standards. I'm sure those those, those floodlights are not. But I'm sure it was just a bunch of lads with torches up in the top, <laughs> up in the top corner, shining down, just phone lights. It was lit like a Coldplay gig when they started to do fix you. You know what I mean? That's how. But you know, it's not. You know, but these are professional level footballers who should have had more than enough to to to, to see that game and out. It was the, and it, I, as much credit as you give Shrewsbury, and I think again they do deserve mm. it. Liverpool are very much the architects of their own downfall. Yeah. Like, they they kept doing just stupid things like like for no reason. Big just giving the ball away at the back, like you mentioned, Matip's mistake earlier could have scored from that. We get caught out. The, 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 obviously, Lovren and Matip get done for the goal. And even after even at two all, I thought right, okay, Liverpool will regroup, and they kind of did. They had a little spell where they had the ball. But then it gets to the final fair, then it would just break down. With but you're then, in, you're then in magic of the cup hero territory, oh, and you've got that moment. one where the ball falls to Curtis Jones, and he's trying to beat that, and he's you know he's, he's sliding in. You got the lad, the defender, throwing his body on the line, and blocking it. And stuff, yeah. You know that's where that's where they're at. It was panic stations, but it was all then about them just packing the box with as many men as they possibly could. And we, you're right, we let that situation. Exist. Yeah. We developed it to that situation. That's when you need someone to stick it in. Salah missing it, you know. Salah missing headers, then you you're not gonna you're not gonna win the match yeah, ultimately. It's it's you mentioned before about the subs. Actually, I found it weird that if he was prepared to use them, he probably should have been prepared to use them ten minutes earlier. Yeah. At, you know because we were rubbish. Well, that's what I mean. It wasn't that they weren't planned subs. I no, don't think no, in the same that, way. You know how we've seen. Uh, Lalana Chamberlain yeah. swapping hands, you know, swapping shirts at sixty minutes because that's just that that that's pre pre planned. You're right because if 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 the aim is to just go and kill Shrewsbury off, then Salon and Firmino come on with twenty minutes to go. Well, just, even one just of them. To, yeah. you could, I think again, I, I, when I was looking at the game and when I was looking at the bench, I was thinking he needs to bring one of them on. It's it isn't ideal because obviously you don't, they want the rest and stuff. And I understand that. I actually thought it should be Firmino. I was thinking. Get a, he's not going to run around that much in 20 minutes. Listen, he might get a, a knock and a kick, and that can happen. Mm-hmm. And, and that's that's the way it is. But the ball just wasn't sticking, and there was not there was no. You mentioned the packed box or whatever. Or, or there was no craft around the edge of the box. There was nothing there, you know. Which are, whether that's a, a, a knock on the strikers, it probably is, isn't it? In fairness, but they're on they're on the pitch because Klopp didn't want to replay. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. it's the only reason they're on the on. on and either way, he, anybody what? score. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> and I agree, but then. My thinking was even at two one, you could tell it wasn't working. I think if you bring one of them on at two one, you might be you know you might not even get the third, but you might kill the game a little bit more. But it, again, it's, it's it's all hindsight. It's a it? calculated risk though, and yeah. we've taken these throughout the season, and we've gotten away with some of them. It's not playing Fabinho uh, away at Villa in the league and playing Lana in the six, and you know skin of our teeth, we come away with three points. The dar- five, that, both derbies, he's done it in both. All the, the derby so far this season, we've taken a few of these, and this was very much that. And the fact is, you know, it was undone by our own stupidity. And look again, you know, the, the heart and endeavour streets. We don't want it to sit here and beat. Like this fucking elite. The lad in midfield was good. Like, the lad in midfield was good for them as well. He was. He, he, is it Lauren? Is there? I think his name was. Yeah. Um, yeah. He won man the match. Did, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought he, he played well and he actually boxed on the field, which is again an indictment on Liverpool. With all due respect to the lads, you know he's he's he, he's a League Two player or whatever. So again, what I would say, what what uh, from Shrewsbury point of view was that at two 0 they didn't just fold. Yeah. Uh, you know, Everton folded at one 0 in that in the third round. As soon as Curtis Jones' goal went in. Everton players, one day just didn't want to be there no more. The fans started getting off and they just had nothing to do with it. 
at 2-0 when that lad scores that, you know, it's, it's, a, it's an absolute shocker. You know, he, he's had a nightmare there, hasn't he? It would be easy for them to just jib it off. And maybe Liverpool jibbed it off. Maybe that second goal almost said to give Shrewsby the licence of, you know what, let's just... Let's, Not to lose, yeah. Exactly. Like a boxer who's down on points, let's just go swinging. Yeah. And maybe it was a little bit of that as well, but... I do, again, I do think as much as bad as we were, I do think that they they created pressure on a Liverpool side that I haven't seen since. It reminded me of the scale of Lovren days under Klopp, you know, where no scoreline was safe. Yeah. You could be three 0 up yeah. and you you were confident. Even at two 0 I think I, I don't know if you agree. I, that you were in the ground, obviously. I don't know if you felt like that. Even well, at they, 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 were, they were creating chances. Yeah. They were getting they were getting in. You know, they were getting behind, and we looked. Like it was mad because we weren't causing them any problems. We weren't testing their goalkeeper. We weren't penetrating. We weren't creating chances, and yet we were completely vulnerable to the counter attack because we it felt like we overcommitted to every single attack. Yeah, it was it was a, it was yeah. a very weird <laughs> yeah. one. Like. For me, I th- I think the game was crying out for a sub just before they scored. I I think against Everton the game went sort of flat. And we brought Oxley Chamberlain on and it changed the game and we got rewarded with the goal for it because actually Ox was the one making things happen, getting in the right positions. I think in this game, we almost needed something like that, someone to come off the bench and just change things up a bit. It's just, and then when they scored, they got the boost yeah. that, that we got when we went this ahead against just, Everton. It's just one of them. Is the, the, the gulf in levels between these two teams, there's just no excuse. No. There's no excuses for it. Because I'm going to say, if we just had, if we had Lalana, if Keita was a week, had a week of training and all these kind of things, but it's like, we still... We were still should we yeah. were two we were yeah it was literally two nil up yeah. in the game the game was should have been done it should have been an exercise in putting it to bed and we and and actually I never you know and whether it's just how how we've been going along this season I I pretty much convinced myself maybe maybe it's a reality check for us all that you know I was like well there's two nil now we we don't concede more than one in a game it do, it just doesn't happen this is the big encouragement that I would I would yeah. urge people who are losing their heads in the world yeah. because it's the internet the, the um, people to take from this is that what the cup games are they're a bit of a free hit to learn lessons mm-hmm. and there's no lessons being learned in in the Premier League at the moment because it's just it's just a Processing, rinse, repeat, get get through it, get don't don't lose, win or or it's just win, win every <laughs> single game. You need kick up, you need kicks up the arse. We need kicks up the arse the way we actually need this winter break coming. There's a few things that this team needs, and having an opportunity to go to to bollock the players and show them mistakes that they're making and all this kind of stuff actually could be as far as motivational tools go. That's the one. Yeah. To, to spin it, to spin a positive from it is probably literally that. But. I think also as well, someone like a Harvey Elliott, for example, we haven't really mentioned before because he did absolutely nothing. Yeah, mm. he, he really struggled. It's another learning curve for the likes of yeah, him. You know what I mean? Like he, he's he's been riding the crest of a wave ever since he arrived. You know, he, he's walked in. He's been he's played well in even you know mm. the, we go to Villa and get smashed the, the under twenty three is doing. He's the best player. Yeah, and even he, he comes out of that with credit. And yesterday's probably the first time he'll have left the Liverpool game where people are like. That was a bit naff. I'm what, yeah. Exactly, but he's a oh, kid. He's a 16 year exactly. old boy. And he's a, in the exactly, team. and he's a kid, so you, you expect it. And it's, it's all less. And the good thing with Liverpool this year is actually, I, I disagree slightly. And I do think they've had the moments where they've had to the kick up the arse. But well, we've had them in the chat. We had Champions League, we yeah. had, we've had the Napoli games yeah. to do that, is what I'm saying, is that we've been able to maintain the league form yeah. and we've kind of used the cup. The cups have been a little bit of our even learning the, even, experience. Even the games, we, like for example, Salzburg, I imagine Klopp bollocked them. We won 4-3, but yeah. I bet he did. Or oh, Villa, we were rubbish, but we win. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the best thing is that we've learned our lessons and we still won. Yeah. So it's easier to do win in this game. It's well, just a nuisance. And it's it caveat, once again, to use that word, by the fact that we drew this game, it does feel like we lost. Yeah. And it feels like we lost because I just didn't want to. I didn't want to replay. And, <laughs> look, let's, and, the, the, and as it turns out, neither the manager. Let's talk about it because ultimately, this is the the stuff that everyone's talking about in the fallout from this. Ben um, Klopp was asked. We I tried to track down the press conference from this because there was none because it, it was, was like basically a basically game. It was stood outside the tunnel, wasn't it? Basically, yeah. And yeah. he got asked. He was asked by I think it's Neil Jones who asks the question, yeah. and then it's followed up by James Pierce in the mid. People saying, "Can you just say nice things about Shrewsbury, please, Jürgen?" Um, <laughs> He, um, yeah, he basically said that you know Liverpool. It was a pre-arranged. If they got to a replay, Liverpool senior players would not be involved. Jurgen Klopp will not be involved. They've all got a holiday booked. Um, I, 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 I can, so, I can understand what, what. I'm so conflicted with it. I am. Um, I, I can understand the point he's trying to make about the FA and the scheduling. 
and I can I can I can understand the point he's trying to make by not sending the senior players. I, I can I can but I understand why Jurgen Klopp has to sit out of that game. Yeah. I, I mean, if he, he, what? Why not? Why not? You know, if you're going to play all the under kids who play at Villa, why not give them the opportunity to be to be put through? You know, they go they go into Anfield. They're going to be in front of a, of a home crowd. You know, be coached by Klopp on the day. What? Why? Why is he removing himself from that situation? I I, I likened it. I was chatting to my housemate last night. I kind of likened it to like if I was to fail one of my exams and then go, well, I don't want to sit the reset because it's in the summer and that's my break. For, for me, you've you've created more work for yourself because we've not won the game. Yeah. And, 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 and I don't know whether that, I don't know whether people agree with me or not. And to be honest, that you know, I, sometimes Klopp watches this stuff, so I'm really sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, but no, but I, don't, I don't like the fact that for me, you're Liverpool manager. It's you know what I mean. Go on, you go on, Jack. Where, where, where do you sit on it? The, the thing for me is, I think this this is clearly Klopp making a stand. You know, the mm-hmm. FA have said to him, it's a winter break. Respect it. Don't organise any friendlies. So he's saying well, it's ridiculous that you put the, an FA Cup replay in there. I'm not. I'm not managing it. The players aren't playing it. I think the chance for the youngsters is amazing. Mm-hmm. And and when Bobby Duncan left in the summer and all the things Cy Ruby said about the club and stuff, we've been brilliant this season with how we've treated our academy, how we've treated our youngsters, mm-hmm. everything like that. And it's another perfect chance for them. But it's the FA Cup. Yeah, that's the thing. There's one thing for us to, to, to and we've done it. We've, we've gone. We've mm-hmm. gone around the houses on it, and we we've, we've said, look, none of us. Is a big fan of the, the League Cup. Bear in mind, Liverpool, you know, it's, it's Liverpool's Cup. We've won it so many times. I've had some great memories. When my first, you know, the first ever Cup final I ever went to on my own back was a League Cup final, etc., etc. I've had some great good times with that. The F, it, there's a difference between the FA Cup and the League Cup. I, and if we want to win, and I, I want to win the treble. I want to win the treble. That's my, that's my issue with it. I'm, but I, the but, thing but is, Klopp's left himself in this situation I, for better or for worse. That he has to, he has to back his, he has to back this decision because he wants the winter break. He's been desperate for the winter mm. break. He understands the importance of it. I think it's it's hypocritical. But the of club him were to made then... aware. The club were made aware that this was a possibility at the beginning of the season. So it's not. This isn't a shock to him. This mm-hmm. isn't. This isn't like the, It's not like they've got off the pitch and they've gone. What? Uh, when? When? When's the replay? They, they, they've known that this is a possibility since August. So I understand they're on the plan in the winter break, but with, you know what I mean. It, 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 this if you is want, thing. is it okay? So you're saying if we wanted a winter break, then you just got to win that game or lose it's, it. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah. The, the, the difference is like from a sports science point of view, I imagine everything's been geared to the fact that they're not going to be there, which I understand. So we, every you know they've been playing players and. You know the everything they've done, the periodisation and stuff, will have been taken into account that the lads get two weeks off there to, to recover or to rest or to train, whatever. I understand that. I'm conflicted in the fact that I don't see why the lads who've been injured can't still play. So no, no, Mil- 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 Fabinho, yeah, if, if, if they're fit enough, like a Shakiri, yeah. if they're fit enough to, if they've had, they've kind of had their break because they've been injured. Yeah, I get what I, the, the Klopp thing. I, I think his point is. Neil Critchie knows these lads more than I do. So mm. it's his team. Yeah. So, again, I understand it. It's essential what it is, Paul. I can tell you, it, it, it's just a protest. Yeah. Because what happens is in this country, it's very, very odd in that we've got two organisations that run the, run the football. They've got the Premier League and the FA and they don't communicate, they don't talk to each other. If that's your winter break, that is the winter break, but it's the Premier League's winter break. It's not the FA's winter yeah. break. So they're two different organisations and they've gone, right, game there. And, and Liverpool have gone, absolutely not. Because we're off, we're having, we're having our two weeks off or whatever, and I've, all our lads are going away, and so I, I get it. I get the players, I get the players going away, but for, and 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 there's been there's been conversations about Klopp disrespecting the cup and, and all that, and and I've and all the top teams do it, all the top teams rotate, but for me, for Klopp in particular, I'm disappointed for him to completely go and shun that do you not think, himself. Do, do you completely. not think though that it's it's more the first point, and that he knows he doesn't know these kids. <sighs> And Neil Critchley does. Maybe that's what that's all maybe, he is. Maybe it, it is. It's hard. My, but my... why can't he? Act? Why? Why can't he? Act? Why is it? There's benefits to him being around. Yeah, yeah. So, so why why can't he just have Neil Critchley around on the date? Why why can't he be part of the coaching so, staff on the well, date? I don't know. Yeah, you know. Yeah, he's got a boat and I beat that already. Both. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah. The deposits down. And that's but it's, it's all these things. But it's it's it's. Mental fatigue and you know, yeah, he needs to break. You know, he probably feels he needs to break. But again, you know? people will people will scoff at this because we've never had this break before. Mm. But if they what if we want the, if we want what Klopp knows is that football 
will fill every available moment it's given. Yeah. And somehow they finally, finally got their heads around creating a slight break just to give the players a little bit back. And there's always going to be people there who go, well, oh, they paid loads of money. I'm not a sports scientist, but people are. And people know that people are physically only capable of, of so much. And Klopp's made a big deal about that, you know, there's going to be a Club World Championship after every fucking season. You know what I mean? All of, all of a sudden, there's too much football. The African Cup of Nations being moved back to the mid-season. All this kind of stuff. It's going to be a World Cup to fit in somewhere in, 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 in a couple of years' time. The Euros this summer. Yeah. You can't go... If you, if you accede to this, then you're basically saying... We didn't really need the winter break. Yeah, is his part? Is his yeah, thing? Yeah. And the the fundamental problem with it is that the you can't fuck off Premier League games and you can't fuck off Champions League games. And people might, people might say, well, why? It's money. Yeah. The FA Cup is the weakest of the competitions, and and and, and, and so same as the Carabao Cup. What it boils down to is you earn loads less money, they're less valuable to Liverpool, and I'm sorry that that's the way it is. And I don't, I'm not saying I agree with that. I quite, I, I quite like the FA Cup. Yeah. But I'm annoyed with it. Paul, something's got to give, and unfortunately, what's going to give is the competitions that have got the least power and the least money, and the ones that have the least impact on the on the day to day run of the football club. And I don't, I don't have to agree with that. I'm just making. I'm, I'm just pretty making sure FSG. I imagine they, they must be targets that get set for the manager. There has to be. I bet you they don't even talk about the domestic cups. I bet you everything is Premier League and Champions League driven. It might be like, we expect you to be qualified for the Champions League, get out the group, and we expect you to be in a title race by X. I think that would be the logic. I don't think they care about it. Mm -hmm. My issue is this Liverpool team is so good, and I think it's one of the best teams we've seen. I, I am keen for Liverpool, because I think the league is wrapped up. We're going to touch wood, hopefully nothing bad happens. I think we had the scope to win the FA Cup as well. Mm -hmm. I think the squad mm -hmm. is more than good enough. And that's why I'm conflicted. I get Klopp's point. He is he is protesting. He is it's essentially a strike. It's yeah. it, it is. I, I, and I, I'm all for that because that uh, the way I've been brought up and stuff is that you can't support the workers. Mm -hmm. The difference in the situation the is like multi-millionaire multi -millionaire fellas. It's one extra game that you you could still have a little a bit of a break after the game. You could still, easily fly out. Well, I on thought Thursday. I thought the game was going to be the weekend, the eighth and ninth. If, if, if it's, you, week, yeah. you could end up with the Tuesday night, the fourth. And then and you've, days, then, you've yeah. then got ten days off. I mean, I, for me, I think I think it's just. I think it's yeah. a very hard PR situation for Liverpool. I, I think this might be one of those situations. There, Jurgen Klopp has managed the PR situation really well, it's, it's the time. and I think he's now built himself up that he's using this as, to take a stance. And I don't know because it, ultimately, how people feel about this is going to depend on how Talksport covered it. And how the Sun cover it, and how the Star, the Daily Star cover it, and how how the mainstream media decide. Because if they decide to make him to to to, because the problem is, is the FA Cup is the FA Cup. Oh, the FA Cup! It's, like, it's, it's like, the yeah. and the magic of the cup. and it, the FA Cup is such a, a evocative, emotive competition. And it's it's the best. Look, it is the best domestic cup competition on the planet. By the way, you know, no other league is good. Is their, their domestic cups are nothing like as good as the FA Cup. You know, the fact that you can start a Sunday league team and within like three seasons, you can be in the pre 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 prelims. You can technically win it. You know, there's, there's a beautiful thing about the FA Cup, which is what makes it very hard. And that's why I think Jurgen Klopp has entered himself into a really difficult situation where he's decided to use this to take a stance in terms of the welfare of footballers. No, I don't think the mainstream media and your football traditionalists are ever going to understand or want to understand his stance on this. So I think we're going to be—we you know might have to batten football? down the hatches on this one. This break was brought in, in part, to help England in the tournament. Apparently, from what I've read, I saw on the Athletic. I think was it Mark Hogden? I think who said? I think he tweeted saying like the FA brought this gap into helping England in the tournament, and now they're putting games on in that. You know, it's no coincidence that you know England's four best strikers are all injured at the minute because mm -hmm. they all played too much footy. It's it's not your bank balance doesn't affect your physiology of your body. You cannot. There's a, there's a limit to what you can do. <laughs> so I get it. Like Harry Kane is on 150 grand a week. It doesn't stop his hamstring going when he plays six games in like 20, 12 days mm -hmm. or whatever it was. Yeah. Six games in was it 18 days or something mad it was. So I, so I understand it. It's just that I disagree with Jürgen on the fact that I think you could send a lot of the first team away. But I think you could have players who, if they're fit, who haven't played for the last. He's so made a very. We, why, uh, why the matter? He's made a very moment? definitive stance on this. You're yeah. right because you're dead right. For me, 
There's no reason why. Why, why does Adrian need to have a rest? Adrian Milner, Matip, Matip Lo- do you think, Genuine question. Do you, do, you, do you think he wants to go through? Yeah, I don't think he cares. No, I, I don't think to... he cares. I think if he cared, and and look again, we all come down to this, we thought this about the Wolves game in the cup last last season where Keanu Hoover ends up coming off the bench to, to play in that game, and we also we're wearing all the senior lads. He's. Yeah, I think like, I think he he, he prioritises the he prioritises prioritises the Premier League and he prioritises the Champions League and this competition is a bonus if we manage to get through in it because as much as we look we played look at the team we played against Everton look at the team that we put out last night part of it's trust part of it him trusting the lads that he's got out there to go and do the job for him and no and that's what it boils down to those lads have fucked them the lads so, that he's put on the pitch have fucked a fuck club mm-hmm. and he will step up and he will bear in this because it's his decision to make but I don't think he. I think he would be happy to win it, but it's not a priority. I thought it was very, very clever, the fact that he, he, he put out there, we were told that we can't schedule games mm-hmm. in this break. You know, we weren't allowed mm-hmm. to fly to Dubai and play a friendly. Yeah. You know, I think in the Spanish winter break, Real Madrid did it a lot, didn't they? They yeah. went off and, and played yeah. games. You know, we were told it's a winter break and you are not allowed. Don't schedule games, don't sch- schedule friendlies. And he's gone, yep, yeah, fine. We'll all we'll all jet off to wherever we go. He isn't even doing a warm weather camp, is he? he was, yeah. It's a proper holiday that they're having. Because they don't get that to be fair from the players. You, know, you think about Christmas and all that. You know they don't get ta- they got families. You know at the end of the day they don't they don't have proper time to spend with them all. Ten years time, when this is an established part of the football calendar, everyone else will think the same, and everyone else will be outraged when football tries to get played in this winter break. Mm. Yeah. But at the moment, it's a new thing. Most people don't even know that it is. So all yeah. Klopp's doing is and fucking up the And it's a German thing, players. isn't it? Instead of, but yeah. he's got a different and, mentality. And, and you've got this, you know, people people taking on bridge with Klopp and Guardiola because you know. But when they say we should sack off replays, well, tell Shrewsbury yeah. that the replays are getting are getting sacked off because they're going to be made up. They, they, I, you know, they poured onto the pitch and they were right. They were. It was the biggest, one of the biggest moments in that club's history was taking the the, the European and World Champions, Premier League champions, elect, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, you know, to all to a, to a replay. They, they they treated that game like they just won the cup, and try to tell them they're not going to go and get that moment at Anfield now. Let's be honest. If it goes to penalties and they win that game, which yeah. they they would actually with the momentum of that game, they could well have gone. Am I right saying no? There's no replace on the fifth round. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Which is again, it's weird. And also, I think <laughs> it's it's one of those where I was thinking about it. If Liverpool go through, or well, sorry, if 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 it wasn't for the uh, what's the word Club World Cup, sorry that we've just had, we wouldn't be playing West Ham this week. Mm. And maybe you can rearrange the friendly the, the replay to be this week. Yeah. But the fact that Liverpool had, were told he had to go to Qatar. And then they had to jib off another cup to go to Qatar. It's all piled up into this big, big old mess. Yeah. And it's what happens when there is t- too many people at the top who don't get on, who don't talk. It's, it's like, also a problem with with because the moment it looks like elitism, poor old Liverpool, oh poor old success, oh Liverpool, oh you want to go and do all this? Blah, blah, blah. If if an English team won the Champions League every year. There would be an English team in the Club World Cup in that situation every year, and 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 people would be able to think, and you know, you'd have. Chelsea fans would understand it more, and Spurs fans would understand it more, and United fans, would, and it would be more of a thing. Was the moment there's this? We everyone hates Liverpool because Liverpool are ruining football and ruining the league and all that. And it's just another example of Liverpool being unbearable and being knobheads and being self, you know, kind of like loving themselves at the, at the you know, and, and not being asked about it. It's it, that that's. Yeah, that is where is it is at the forefront of it, and he's going to get absolutely slaughtered for it, and we're going to have to do you think deal with whatever whatever the fallout of this is? On the, the talk of the replay, is that obviously people are you in your you're in your lookup scheme? I imagine with your season, mm-hmm. and, and, and you guys yeah. as well, you are. There's a chance that like they might just charge like fifty quid or something without without you knowing, and you've got no choice now because, yeah. and then all of a sudden you're going to be paying fifty quid to watch the results. Well, this is a big issue because two twofold, and I saw a lot of people say, "So you're making it five pound a ticket?" Well, what hang on, what about Shrewsbury's gate receipts? Gate receipts? Yeah. yeah, that's a whole thing about keeping yeah. the replays to begin with. Which, yeah, but then that, the, the flip side of that is you might get a full house of forty thousand, fifty thousand people playing a fiver. There's no way that Anfield will. I, as much as Liverpool fans are brilliant yeah. and we determine the game, it's, yeah. it would be hard to justify. It's very rare Anfield isn't full, but I imagine that if, if it's because full it's, because it's, for this. Look, we've just been through a mad period of Christmas. We've had extra games. People have flown to Qatar. People are go there's that the Atleti tie. There's, there's stuff going on, and then all of a sudden you're going to go. By the way, lads, here's, here's another fifty quid. Listen, a lot of people might pay, and it might be pretty. I don't know, but I think it would be. You could even pay a fiver, say, listen, everyone, it's a fiver, and just give Shrewsbury some money or something. I don't know, just say to them, like, 
have it under pretense of it. We're not bothered, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's a it's, difficult situation. It's, it's but, really it, but, but then, you know, again, I did, I'm pretty sure, but I did, the price I probably had to pay as well. We paid full price for Villa away in the in the league in yeah. the league cup. I don't even know that was probably only twenty quid or thirty quid. That was set but by it, them. That was set. That. But even, even so, the point still remains, yeah. isn't it? You know, that, that's the, it was an example of whoever's at fault. You, we're getting we got fleeced we're, to play. That's the thing, that, yeah. You know, you should be if, you should be paying a quid or something to watch those lads. The lads that we put out on the pitch is not worth. You know, you can you can buy a you can buy basically buy a women's season ticket for the same price that we paid for a for a full for a full match ticket to watch a bunch of children play for, for Liverpool. Something needs to be done. Is the point? The, the I, thing I, you know, for me is, I, I genuinely think though that as long as the the likes of Curtis Jones and Harvey Elliott are still allowed to be in that squad, I think we'll beat Shrewsbury. I really mm. do. I, I think the young lads will be more up for it than than. My point was yesterday. Then them first teamers. I, I'm not criticising them really because they're very good players. But yesterday they 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 they, they, they let the youngsters down. Yeah. And I think if you put a whole young team out at Anfield against Shrewsbury, I mean it was Shrewsbury's Cup final yesterday as well. They yeah. were playing against players like Fabinho. I think there's a big lesson that we might what might be on the horizon here is that you know it's, we're going to have to find out, aren't we? We're going to have to find out how, how, how whether a Liverpool young side can can handle this. Like, but it's going to be interesting to see what what the levels what the levels truly are. But yeah, I, I'm disappointed because, as I say, I wanted to, I wanted the treble, and that's not to say Liverpool can't win the treble. But I was watching the Shrewsbury game, thinking we Everton gave us the notion that we could probably win the FA Cup with a B team, and you, and I don't think you can, you know, because you know that, if that's what a League One side are capable of doing against mm. the Liverpool side like that, it's only going to take a Championship team in the next round, or a, a Premier League team just as likely to, to, to be drawn, and you're going to have to go full strength. And that's then test that that's going to test the desire of this manager. And how I far think he wants we, to go, it? as fans, want to win that cup more than it's obvious. He don't, I don't. I just don't think he cares. Mm. And whether that's right or wrong, I, I think everyone's got. Well, it's up to him, isn't it? Ultimately, yeah. whether we're whether we're upset about it or not. <laughs> Again, it's we're. Like the conversation about Fabinho's performance, and uh, we're allowed to say, yeah, Klopp, we're not happy with the decision that the manager's making, but still be a hundred percent happy with oh, everything yeah. that the manager's doing at, at the yeah, football yeah. club. It's, it's like people say, oh, well, would you rather than get injured? Well, no, I'd, I'd again, I've got no issue with Van Dijk. I'd out. rather the perfect situation where we put a full strength team out, they get it done in a canter. Man City get these weak draws. And put full strength teams out for half and half at least. Uh, yeah, but even so, you know the odd, 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 we don't do that in cup games. We put weakened teams out and end up in, in replays, yeah. and that's the, that's on the manager. That, that's all. That is you know that's I've the manager. No the players the, put again, the, the, the caveat is, Jurgen is going to come in. Whoever, whoever it is, there are people who are going to criticise him. Some will agree, some will criticise him, and it was because his 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 players let him down. His big players. So every time he's getting a question about this in the next, he, he should be in the back of his head thinking. Fucking hell, Dejan and Joel. Dejan Lovren should be doing all the press yeah, on this honestly, one. Like Joel, Matt, 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 if a Lovren and Fabinho should be in the three, going, um, so your manager's giving the FA Cup up? Yes, yeah, Soz. He should have just been <laughs> by the side. He should have been by the side of the pitch with their like, plane tickets and a shredder and just holding them over going, how we doing, how we doing? Oh, 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 oh Dejan, sorry. <laughs> Go on, right. You're playing in the replay. For, for being, oh, misplaced pass. <laughs> you're in the replay. Go on, yeah, yeah, definitely. It's, but he, he is, I get the feeling we're almost about to cut our noses off despite our faces yeah. a little bit. The, the one thing that I, I, I will say about this is that I love people getting really wound up about things that I'm not super passionate about. So there's going to be loads of fume from Middle England on this. Um, <laughs> there already was last night. Oh, yeah, there God, was yeah. loads. Piers Morgan had a right go. Whenever there. people get really, truly wound up about things, like when people get wound up about flags and, you know, and borders and, and all and so, you know, all the kind of things, <laughs> like, you know, and, and you, know, you know, there's plenty of things that I get wild, I do, do get wound up about, but when it's things that I genuinely don't care that much about, I do love to see the reaction. So at least that should be batting down the hatches, Reds, because the reaction is going to be something else because we, we've just we've just basically took a big shit in the FA Cup. Yeah. Um, the, the thing is, though, as well, we're going to get fined for this. Huddersfield were fined a couple of oh, years God, ago. Yeah, for, it's all, it's all going to it's all going to kick yeah. off. It's going to be fascinating. Anyway, listen, we're going to wrap that up because yeah. The FA Cup's dead, um, <laughs> and we've killed it. Uh, and Dejan Lovren, Dejan Lovren has killed the FA Cup. <laughs> Sorry. 
Um, <laughs> uh, let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe to the RedmenTV.com. Uh, the fallout from this is going to continue. Uh, we'll, be co- we'll be covering it doubtless over on the Redmen News YouTube channel. Uh, gents, thank you very much. It's been an absolute pleasure. West Ham up next. The build-up show will be out later this week. Ta-ra. <laughs>